time for top 10 medieval horror movies you gotta see or else. There are only so many of these movies out there, so I took some artistic licensing with some of my choices. Feel free to tell me all about it in the comments. Let's start off with something a little old school, 1968's Witchfinder General. Oh, the good old days. All you had to do to get rid of someone you didn't like was call them a witch and you could legally murder them. Now we just give our own modern witches reality TV shows. But then I tell him I feel like I feel like such an evil bitch for telling him I don't want his boxes there. Imagine if the roles were reversed. It is a time of great strife in England and an even greater time to make some cash if you are a witch finder. You can torture people to get a confession out of them. Then it's time to round up a posse. The trial consists of dunking the accused in a river to see if they drown or not. If you survive, it's clearly because you are a witch. Oh, that lady must have been innocent. Whoopsie. When a priest is accused of witchcraft and thrown into prison, the accusers decide to add insult to injury by raping his daughter as well. Bad move, as she has promised to this guy, who will stop at nothing to get his revenge on the corrupt Witchfinder General. That's right, not any Black Death, THE Black Death. It's 1348 and the plague is killing off about 50% of Europe's population. Bring out your dead! Here's one! I'm not dead! He says he's not dead! Yes he is! I'm not! There is a small town nearby that is completely untouched by the plague, and these guys are sent by the church to find out why. Nice, Sean Bean is in this? I wonder if the movie that is about the bubonic plague is the one he might survive in? Poor Sean Bean never catches a break. When one of the members of the group catches a disease, the race is on, and there is no time to stop for the monks from Monty Python's The Holy Grail. When they arrive in the village, it's really not so bad after all! Oh wait, spoke too soon. There is a very blonde red woman in town, and she is up to her usual tricks. After firing a demon out of her vagina, thanks Game of Thrones can and see that, and bringing a girl back from the dead, it will be all the adventurers can do to save this poor village. Welcome to Tombs of the Blind Dead. A fun camping trip is quickly ruined because this guy can't help but flirt with other women right in front of his girlfriend, so she'd rather jump off a moving train than spend any more time with him. Yeah, sounds about right to me. After wandering the countryside, she stumbles upon the long-abandoned town of Brazano and decides it's a good place to camp for the night. Holy shit, she can start a fire way faster than I can! But this is actually the burial place of the Knights Templar, and they don't like it when outsiders profane their temple. Great, they have swords too. I know what you're thinking, fuck off Oz, Templar zombies? Well, there's actually a good reason. When the Templars returned from the Holy Land, they brought back many treasures, including the Dark Arts. After ravaging the countryside with dark magic, the King of Spain has them killed and their eyes are picked out by crows. The bite from one of these unholy knights does the usual turn you into a zombie lust for human flesh thing. I recognize that red glow, there must be a Kenny Rogers Roasters next door! Brian? Jerk Boyfriend returns to Brizano at night to see if he can solve the mystery of the blind dead. Next up is Sleepy Hollow, but which one is it? Creepy shots, really weird gizmos, Johnny Depp, must be Tim Burton's version, definitely not the TV show. Yeah, I'll pass. In life, the horseman was feared as a powerful and brutal warrior all across the land. He was killed and, let's just say, things got a bit worse. Now he is back for revenge on the small town of Sleepy Hollow. After a bunch of murders, Ichabod Crane is sent from the big city to figure out what is causing them. After investigating and finding the most obvious tree in the forest, what do you know, it's full of heads, Ichabod comes to a startling realization. The Headless Horseman is using the heads as sex toys and doesn't like sharing them. <laughs> sorry, sorry, had to clear the cobwebs there. Apparently I'm the only one that was thinking that. He actually determines the Horseman is being controlled and only kills those he was sent to. But not all is lost. He is forbidden to enter holy places like this church. Suck on that, Headless Horseman! Ah, shit, this guy is very resourceful for someone who can't see anything. With the evil eye working against him, Ichabod definitely has his work cut out for him. Pull up a chair and grab yourself a flag and a veil whilst I tell you the tale of the Knights of Badastum. From all across the land, the greatest warriors have gathered for the most important battle of all time. Okay, so it's more like a bunch of dorks have gathered to play live-action Dungeons and Dragons, but use your... Imagination. Imagination not enough for you? Then join Jason from True Blood and take a huge bong hit. Better yet, grab a whole bag of shrooms and get into that LARPing spirit. The only difference is this time that is a real spellbook used to summon demons that has been lost for hundreds of years. Ooh, my kind of demon. I know what you're thinking, and no, women this hot don't actually roleplay, and even if they did, they're totally not into you. Well, the unsuspecting LARPers defeat make-believe monsters, the real demon is taking lives with no chance at a revive spell. With lives being lost, it's time to drop the foam swords and D20s and grab some real weapons. 
Make sure to check out this flick so you can tell your children that you are at the Battle of Evermore! This isn't your regular Dracula story. Dad, do you notice anything strange? Yeah, his hairdo looks so queer. I heard that! It was a boy! No, this is the untold story of Dracula. See what I did there? Vlad was a beloved prince who did some really, 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 really bad things to protect his people from all invaders. When the Sultan demands 1,000 boys in tribute, including his son Rick and Stark, Vlad defies. Now he has quite the large army to fight off, but he knows of a powerful vampire nearby that might just be able to give him the power he needs. And since every medieval movie that came out since Game of Thrones started has two of its cast members, the vampire's Tywin Lannister! Vlad drinks the vampire's blood and discovers if he doesn't feed on human blood within three days, the effects will be reversed. But if he succumbs to temptation, it will be permanent. Vlad now has the ability to slay whole armies. Will it be enough to save his people? Will they accept what he has become to save them? Will he resist drinking blood? I already know, but if you want to know, watch Dracula Untold. Something's wrong, something's amiss, is what I would say to you if you haven't seen Army of Darkness. Ash Williams is an s employee by day and chosen one by night. After reading from the Necronomicon, he is pulled into a portal where he ends up in the Middle Ages. After being wrongly imprisoned, the villagers quickly realize Ash is in fact the chosen one from the prophecy. He is sent on a mission to find the Necronomicon, which will save the villagers and allow him to return to his own time. The only problem is the darkness is constantly pursuing him. Eventually, the darkness possesses him and he splits into two. You mean? I'm bad at it. And you're good at it. You're good at little two shoes. Wait a sec, I've seen Bruce Campbell do this gag before. You watch your mouth. Oh, why? Is little goody two shoes embarrassed, huh? Mr. Goody that Two Shoes! That Bruce Campbell is a Goody jack of all trades! Ash does find the book eventually, most certainly does not say the magic words, and unleashes the army of the dead. Whoopsie! Now the chosen one must rally the troops for the final battle to come, and know this, the army of darkness knows not fatigue, fear, or hunger. From the creator of Conan the Barbarian, Robert E. Howard, comes Solomon Cain. As a second-born son, Solomon's father wants to give him to the church, cause frankly, no one likes paying for second sons. After walking out, Solomon has a fight with his brother and accidentally kills him. Fast forward and Solomon has become quite the greedy douchebag, but his evil ways are starting to catch up to him and Solomon is number one on Hell's recruitment list. Taking a vow of peace and meeting up with a nice family who doesn't care about his past, Solomon has never been happier. But alas, it was not meant to be. When the family is murdered and one of the daughters captured, Solomon vows to get her back safely by any means necessary. Which is probably a good thing because he will need to overcome Leatherface. and his possessed goons, a bunch of zombies, and finally being crucified to fulfill his quest. Joined by the Hound and his merry men, the time to rid the land of the great evil is at hand. Might want to avoid whatever belongs to that foot though. Long before Ringu terrified audiences, the Japanese created the classic horror movie Onibaba. This flick is a lot more subtle than a modern one, but that's where the fear is created. The fact that you could actually see this happen in real life. All the men are off to war, and with no one to tend the fields, this woman and her daughter-in-law are forced to murder traveling samurai to survive. After looting the bodies, all they need is a place to get rid of them. Hey, there's this convenient hole here! The hole. Dark, menacing, and eternal. Not a nice spot for your final resting place by any means. When their neighbor Hachi returns from the battle to inform the woman that her son is dead, she is distraught but realizes Hachi's skills might come in handy. But Hachi has other plans. He hasn't known a woman in quite some time, and the way his friend's widow beats the laundry is really getting his motor going. Knock that grime out, you dirty girl. Fortunately for Hachi, the girl is right on board, but Mama is quite jealous and does everything in her power to make sure the relationship fails. When a gentleman caller spurns her advances and acts like a dick towards her, the woman changes him from a potential lover to a market profit off of. She tricks him into falling in the hole, only this time the hole has a surprise for them all. <laughs> Last on the list is Edgar Allan Poe's The Pit and the Pendulum. It's 1492. Isn't the year Columbus sailed the ocean blue? And the Spanish Inquisition is in full swing. Even death isn't enough to save you from the lash if the Inquisitor wants to label you a heretic and confiscate your wealth. <laughs> But the living have even more to worry about when it comes to the church. When Maria tries to intervene on a barbaric act, she's accused of being a witch and arrested. When she's being examined for witch's marks, Grand Inquisitor Torquemada starts going gaga staring at her naughty bits and must be flogged to get the image out of his head. But the flogging isn't enough and Torquemada decides to give in to his carnal passions while the viewer hopes that sword is coming down. 
totally unaware that the sword of Damocles is dangling just above his head. And then one day, when he least expects it... Maria's husband is captured trying to rescue her, and not even an order from the Pope can stop the Grand Inquisitor. Now there is only one choice left. The pit or the pendulum. Thanks for checking out my video, and as always, your likes, subscribes, and comments are much appreciated. If you have any suggestions for movies you want to see in future videos, let me know about them in the comments section.